Hello, welcome to recitation zero part E on debugging. This will be a short introductory tutorial in debugging in Python. I hope this will be useful for both homework part ones and part twos. The first type of debugging we will cover is print debugging. As its name suggests, print up debugging is where you simply print out any values of interest. The two main types of values that you might want to print out is the variable itself, which will return the value of the variable and also the type of the variable. For example, here we're printing out the type of curve. The type will, give, will return the actual type of the object. This is especially useful in Python as the type is not declared explicitly unlike languages like C. So when you're working with large scale object oriented code as you will in homework part ones, it is often very easy to get lost in all the types and be confused. Printing the type will allow you to work out whether you are on the right track for the homeworks and is also very useful when you're trying to debug. Here we'll just run a little play example. As you can probably tell, the example is calculating successive values of the Fibonacci sequence and appending it to the Fib list. Here you can see we have a print statement here, which is printing out the term, each term of the sequence and also the value of that term. So for example, we can see term seven of the Fibonacci sequence is 13. Once again, here we can see that we successfully printed out the type. The type of cur is int as expected and the type of fib is a list. We also printed out the length of the fib array, which happens to be 12 in this case. The, 10, the two initial values along with 10 additional values. So print debugging is very useful in general as it's simple to do and and I guess you can also include any form of information you want. However, one downside is that it will quickly get messy and in home of uh, part twos, if you want to be logging, like tracking your data, um, print printing is also a good way to do that. However, as I'll show you later, there's another better way which you can approach it. The second type of debugging I will explain is using a debugger. Specifically for Python, we will be using PDB, which is um, this debugger. Okay, so let's run this little example. It's the same example as before, except we are now using a debugger. <clears throat> the only thing that you should notice here is this command here, pdb.setTrace. This effectively sets a breakpoint at this point in the code. A breakpoint effectively allows you to stop execution at anywhere you want it to. So the debugger will run the code up until the first time this breakpoint is hit. So this line of code is hit. Once we hit here, let's move on to the terminal. So in the terminal for PDB, we can type in various commands. Some useful ones are just typing out the name of a variable. For example, if we type out num, we get that its value is two. We type out fib, we get that the value is a list and then <clears throat> containing the value zero and one. This is as expected since we initialize num to two and fib to zero one. This is however, if we try to print the value of temp, we get some bogus value because temp is not actually initialized at this point in the execution of the code. The first useful command we will show is in. This stands for next and it executes the next line of code. This arrow here shows the next line of code that will be executed. So pressing in, we effectively execute the line temp equals priv. And now if we type in the value of, try to find the value of temp, we get that it's zero, which is set to the previous value of priv. The second command that is useful is C. C stands for continue. And what it does is it continues the execution of the code until the breakpoint is set again. So let's see, for example, right now we are in execution zero. So if we type I as expected, we're in iteration zero. If we type C, this continues up until the next time the breakpoint is hit. And if we try to type I again, we can see I is incremented to one. We type C again. We run another iteration of the loop. If we type I, it is now two. A final useful command that you might want to use is L. L stands for list. And what it does is it lists some of the source code um, of, of your program and also the line where you're currently at. So this is a nice, easy way to visualize where you're currently at in the code. 
And yeah. <clears throat> if you are ever get lost in the debugger, you can use a help command. This lists all the commands that are available in the debugger. And if you need any specific help, you can type help C, for example, or any other command, and it gives you a detailed explanation of what this command does. The final tool I would actually like to show you is a website known as 1db.ai. Personally, I did not use this, but I know quite a few friends who did, and they all had successful mm -hmm. stories to tell about it. Basically, when you're doing homework part twos, you will be training your own neural networks, and it is very important that you track the progress of your network and also save the state and parameters of your model so that if the execution ever halts, you can resume training without restarting the whole thing. 1db allows you to do this in a very simple way. Basically, all you have to do is import the module, and then you can add a few lines of code to initialize 1db and watch your model and allow you to log any metrics that you want to. And then finally, 1db will automatically save your model and also do things like allowing to add visualizations for any metric that you want to. So here we can see an example. Um, 1db allows us to track the validation loss, the training loss, validation accuracy, and training accuracy across many different steps. Furthermore, in addition to that, 1db has also saved the models and the parameters, which will allow you to resume training. So do check this out. I believe it will be immensely helpful when you're trying to debug for part two homeworks. Thank you, everyone. That will be all for the debugging tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Mm -hmm.